teachers are the mainstay of education. Teachers do not only build the personality of the student, but also contribute to building the nation. The role of a teacher in a student's life has been praised since time immemorial because of their knowledge. World Teachers Day 2023 is a day of recognition and appreciation for teachers around the world. It is an occasion to celebrate the profound impact teachers have on the society by equipping students with the requisite skills, knowledge and values needed for success. Uh, this day also serves as a reminder of the importance of quality education and the role of teachers in achieving this. Uh, with us in the studio to have this conversation is Taiwo Hassan Soweto. He's an education rights expert and will be looking at the topic, assessing the role of teachers in nation building. Good morning, Taiwo. Thank you for joining Good us. Good morning. Thanks for having me. You're welcome. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah. All right. Uh, to what extent do teachers instill positive values and ethics? Teachers, I, I must say, kudos to them, um, building basics of, you know, life, um, life uh, ethics and yeah. knowledge and basic yeah. needs to face the world at large, um, you know, instilling these values into the young ones. But do, does it really still stand so, you know, instilling values and ethics and character traits in their students? I, I think it still is his stance, despite uh, um, the decline in education in the uh, value system. I, I think it's his stance because there's no one who will not tell you that their first point of contact with knowledge, apart from the, the home setting, mm. is the school. And that means the teachers. Um, but over time, you know, uh, we, we have had serious declines in this because you also now have questions about the professionalism of teachers. You have problems with regards to their qualifications. And then you also have problems with the fact that given the way the value system of society has really gone down, we face the possibility in the next few years that we are going to have teachers who are product of this system. Mm imbibing this wrong value system and then what becomes of education our children in, in that situation but I think um, uh, so far we can we can say that despite all that has gone down despite uh, what teachers suffer that teachers still remains the bedrock of Nigeria's education system and 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 this and, and I think that on this occasion we need to really uh, celebrate teachers and give kudos to them especially for those of them who are working under impossible conditions. There are those who are working in remote places mm -hmm. where there is hardly any government support. The schools are completely almost broken down. And there are those who are working in conflict areas who have become uh, victims of, uh, you know, insurgency. They are hardly talked about, even sometimes by the media, when you are mm -hmm. talking about statistics of death, statistics of people who have been kidnapped. Nobody talks about the fact that many of these... Uh, you know, our teachers, I think in the last uh, six years or so, over if not 15 to 20,000 teachers would have lost their lives, with some of them also uh, 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 kidnapped, mm. uh, as well as uh, thousands of schools, you know, I think about 910 schools destroyed in, in the Northeast. That is the statistics. And when we talk about that today, it means that we really have to uh, give kudos to teachers who are still working under these very impossible conditions. All right, let, let us look at the quality of teachers that we have these days. You have alluded to that in your submission. However, um, growing up, I, I must say, um, shout out to my mom, actually. She's a teacher, still teaching till today. Same with mine. And um, <laughs> um, I, I know that she has told several stories about, you know, the classes she had to attend, the certifications. Yeah. Uh, so in, in those days, you hear things like the TC1, the TC2, yeah. the, going to the NTI yeah. Yeah. and all that. And these people get grounded in what it means to be a class teacher. Yeah. We don't really hear about these things anymore. And and you can almost feel the, dis, the, dis, the difference 
difference in those teachers of those days and the teachers that we have today. And driving this towards the end point of my question is, when we talk about educational reform, it is easy to point fingers at you know, the building, the equipment required, to books, to the curriculum. Uh, and, you know, when we talk about teachers, what we talk about is how that their welfare need to be taken care of, their, their pay and all. But then from where we source cr the crop of teachers that we have, yeah. is it, should you think it should also be part of the reforms that we're talking about? And, you know, has it really degenerated to that point where we, we question the integrity or, you know, the, the, the wholesomeness or goodness of the process that brings these people into the point where we now call them qualified teachers? But, you know, yes, it, it's gotten to that. Um, and, and, and that's not the, because of the teachers themselves, but because of the conditions they have found themselves. We all have to, you know, uh, raise these questions because you are very correct that in the past, the teacher, the teacher education system was really very, very standardized. You know that you, you have the outcomes of the education system being very grounded. People going to teaching profession because they are committed to becoming knowledge producers, you know, and, and from that point of view, you know, that with that commitment, it means that you have people who actually, you know, derive pride from what they are doing. But you would agree with me today that many teachers nowadays are only there, possibly as a stop that profession between one stage of their life and the next one. And, where, and, and many are just forced there because they, they got nothing else to do. Mm. When, so from that point of view, you have many people who are not even qualified teachers who are teaching only because they want to hand some money, you know, on, on the on the way on the way towards something better in their own in their in in, in their own uh, in, the, in their own wisdom. But what is even more terrible or tragic for me is the fact that even for those who wishes to become teachers, the condition the teacher training institutions, you know, that we have today are so terrible when it comes to the quality of infrastructures, the, the funding. I, I always tell people that if you are worried about the condition of educational outcomes in this country, just take a trip, you know, to the public colleges of education that we have across the country. Mm. And you're going to see that you can't, you know, have any good thing out of this system. If you actually have any professional teacher who has been trained in the last 20 years and, and they are very dedicated, they are very professional, you should praise them because that means that they are actually committed and they made effort to equally train themselves outside of uh, the conditions of their education because those schools are really not there anymore. They are not funded as they should and most of them have become a shadow of themselves. I can begin to mention names. Many of these college educations are overgrown. They have with grass. You know, you have... Uh, I mean, it, it's just so terrible because um, it, w w when it comes to the general issues of underfunding of education, mm. there, are, there are staggered realities when it comes to this. The public universities are still doing so much well despite the limited and declined funding. When you're actually looking at the conditions, you know, of the, of the colleges of education, the polytechnics are li only a little better than college of education, but the college of education are completely t in terrible state. And that is the foundation for most teachers. And, and I think that that is why we have some of the problems we have today. All right, now let's look at um, the good old days where education, you know, was really interesting. And of course, we could boast of the crop of persons who graduated from school, you know, way back. I'm talking about some 20, 30 years ago when education was really what it is. And um, that brings us to a person like um, Obafemi Awolowo, who really made sure that education was really accessible yeah. to the average man. And then we saw the crop of, you know, persons that came out of school those days. Yeah. In your previous uh, massation on this show, you've talked about the capitalist mentality, the capitalist mindset. Yeah. I guess that was where we got it wrong because some certain person decided to start making education look more like a profitable business yeah. rather than helping people to be able to access knowledge. So what we have today is a situation of what I'm going to make as an investor versus yeah. what is obtainable out there. Yeah. So it's either you go for where you get quality education where you're going to spend more or you remain ignorant. At yeah. what point did we miss that gap? I mean, we missed that from the uh, 
if, if you like, you could say from the post-independent period, immediately after independence, um, when, as you said, in the first few years, there was an attempt to try and develop public education. But then afterwards, the neoliberal concept you know, of, of capitalist development became you know, dominant from the 70s onwards, where the whole idea of welfareism, of uh, government putting resources into some sectors of uh, the economy, including education and others, became completely abominable to the new leaders, political leaders, the capitalist leaders, but rather the idea that everything had to be turned to profit. 